Hello and welcome everybody. In this video, I will show how I made the tropical mangrove bases for your miniatures. As reference, I looked at a few pictures of mangroves. I believe it's a marshland where salt water meets fresh water, so I thought of creating something similar looking like this. So here we go. For this video I will use this 25mm round base, but you could basically use any size. What I have here are some tropical driftwood pieces. I will select two pieces to fit on my bases. To fit them on the base, I will now cut them a little bit using a hacksaw. Because it's tropical wood, it can take quite some time. I use the file to smooth out the underside of the wood. What I have here is some air drying modeling clay. I break off a small piece and apply it to the base using some water. In order to make the typical mangrove roots, I will now use this florist wire. I cut off small pieces and place them into the clay using super glue. Here I have some small seashells I will use for the base. I made an imprint in the clay to add them later. I also used some of this ballast here and there to act like rocks. To add a few tree trunks, I will now use these dried branches. I cut off two pieces to use them on the base. I glued the tree trunks to the base using super glue. Here I applied a layer of PVA glue to the roots and the clay. I covered the bottom of the base using this stuff, but you could basically use any fine sand. So now it's time for the leaves of the trees. I cut off a few leaves of this plastic plant I have here. And for a bit of variation, I will also use these ones.
these plastic plants are usually covered in some glossy substance, so they will not collect dust easy. We need to wash this off in order to paint them. I will now use this kitchen degreaser and place the leaves in it for half an hour. When this was done, I used this toothbrush to clean them a bit better and then rinse them in some clean water. To attach the leaves to the trees, I will pin them using this pin vise. I drill the hole in them and then attach some copper wire to the leaves. I also drilled some holes in the tree trunk where I want the leaves to be. I did the same on the driftwood in order to attach the other plants. I attached the leaves to the tree and added a bit of super glue. For the first paint layer, I applied this Tamiya Grey Primer. I then applied a Zenith highlight using Vallejo White Primer. When the primer was dry, I airbrushed a few random greens and browns to the base. I shaded the leaves using red terracotta. The leaves were then base coated using goblin green. I highlighted them using gold yellow. For the ground cover, I first applied a thin layer of PVA glue. What I have here are some tea leaves, which I mixed up with some model leaves. This makes for a nice and cheap ground cover. I now added the small seashell from earlier on. To 
to seal in the ground cover, I applied a mix of PVA, water and dish soap. This dish soap will break the surface tension so it flows over the base more easily. I painted the tree trunks using a mix of Russian uniform and saddle brown. Next up I applied a few layers of Athonian camo shade to all the wood bits. Here I start applying a few weathering pigments to the base. I used Europe dust, African earth, dark mud and burnt umber to do this. In order to make some corals myself, I will now try and use some pieces of this Icelandic moss I have here. I applied a few bright colors to them to make them a bit more interesting. At this point I applied some PVA glue here and there and added my custom made corals. I will now add some more greens to the base. I first applied some PVA at some random spots. I then added these moss pads to the base. I used two different ones to do this. To make the typical mangrove tree roots, I will now use some pieces of this Christmas wreath thingy I had laying around. Here I started gluing the roots to the trees at some random spots. I used PVA here, but I actually recommend using super glue.
I painted the edge of the base using German Camo Black Brown. In order to seal everything, I will now add a heavy coat of glass varnish for some extra protection. After an hour of drying time, I apply the final coat of satin varnish to the base. So at this point you can add your models to your bases. What I have used here are these two skinks that I received from a subscriber named Twice. Thanks buddy, you're awesome. So now it's time for the water effect. You could add masking tape around the base, but I actually found an easier and more consistent way of doing it. As my job, I work as a pastry chef. We use a lot of these silicone trays there to make all kinds of pastry. Just take your base with you when you go shopping and see if you can find one that will fit in the tray. For best results, I recommend finding one that's straight towards the top. This way all your bases will be the same size for gaming purposes. Basically nothing sticks to the silicone trays, so I figured this resin water may work as well. So now let's see if my base will fit in the tray. I might have added a bit too much decoration to the base, but this is just for purpose of the video. So time to add the resin water. I highly recommend using two part epoxy resin for this only. This time I'm going to add some color to the water. I've mixed in equal parts of the resin and stir it until it becomes clear. In between, I will make sure no dust remains in the tray. I used a piece of masking tape to clean the tray. I added a few tiny drops of this transparent paint to the resin. Be very careful with the amount of paint you add. You just want to tint the resin. Unless you're going for a lizardman popsicle, of course. Here I added some of the resin to the tray using a pipette. Be very careful with this resin, however because it's very hard to remove from anything it touches. I actually took a huge gamble with this, because I did not test this beforehand without the model in it. If it would fail, all my hours of work would be wasted, and I actually might have to break something in the house. Here I used an old brush and applied some of the resin to the leaves and the branches. Most of the air bubbles will disappear by themselves, but I recommend checking now and then and popping them if you see them. It's the drum roll moment now, let's try and see how they turned out. I recommend giving the resin 4-5 to five days to cure fully before taking them out. However, impatient as I am, I only waited 36 hours or so.
as you can see, I could have pushed the base a bit more downward while it was drying. And there are some tiny air bubbles here and there, but for the first time I think it looks alright. And for the final step I added these small flowers to some of the plants. So that wraps up this video, I really hope you liked it and that it may be of any use to you. I will leave you now with some pictures of the finished models. As always, thank you for watching, stay tuned for more and take care. Work complete.